Do you know what that demon gave me in exchange for my soul? Autism? <laughs> <laughs> Got it! <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet, promise. Swearsies, just look it up because it's a fact and maybe even totally science. <laughs> Today, we are looking at the final entry from Ramtide regarding Namekun's friend Samayus. If you've missed those episodes, they are in the description. But first, I just wanted to warm us up with something a little bit more creepy. And that is a woman who has come to Reddit quite recently to detail her ex-husband's elf fantasy that ended up destroying their marriage. So I, I couldn't not do that. So I'm just going to kind of shove it in there, kind of also to beef the episode out. If you just want the Ramtide trilogy, then you can go to this timestamp right here, and that will be ready for you. But if you're ready to roll through that first story as a little warm-up, then uh, hey, let's jump into it. My neckbeard ex destroyed our relationship over an elf fantasy. I was toying with the idea of posting this using my main account, but I mainly use that for posting memes and stuff, and... Would rather not have it cluttered with stories from my failed relationship, so here I am. Undercover elf, am I the asshole? <laughs> I love it. Also, I'm sort of new to this. A friend told me that my ex was a neckbeard, and after watching some videos and reading some stories, I can confirm that they are right. They suggested that maybe posting here would help me sort some feelings out too, so hopefully it works. I figured I'd share my story here, partly because I feel like it belongs here, and partly because I really need to vent. By the way, I'm going to be calling him Jay for this post. Well, I'm going to be calling him Elfbeard. <laughs> also, this is a fairly recent breakup, so please forgive me if I rant a bit. I'll add a TLDR. Elfbeard and I had been friends for a fair while before we started dating. We met in school, and he just sort of got adopted into our friend group. We thought he was a nice person. He was a little socially awkward, but... Then again, I'm pretty sure we all were, so it wasn't anything new. I'm pretty sure he falls into the neckbeard attitude than the actual look. Well, OP, as we say around here, it is the beard on the inside that counts. He did have a sort of neckbeard in high school, but he grew it out into quite a nice style. His personal hygiene was fine. He didn't wear a fedora or a trench coat, but he was fond of anime shirts. It was the attitude that really said neckbeard. And unfortunately for me, he didn't make it obvious until we started dating. There were a couple of sexist comments once, when he was drunk, but he was made to apologize, and over time he seemed remorseful, so we forgave him. The same thing happened with some homophobic comments, but he came out as gay a few months after, so we sort of chalked it up to an internalized homophobia. See, that's the weird thing about drinking. It doesn't <laughs> make you somebody else, it just makes who you are abundantly clear. Although, not a fan of cancel culture, so he apologized, you forgave, that's good. Anyway, I thought things were great whilst we were dating, until the incident that I broke up with him over, but I was wrong. We moved in together fairly quickly. I had my own flat, and I was thinking of getting a roommate anyway, and Elfbeard wanted to move away from home, so it just seemed like the most obvious solution. This is where the trouble started, and I didn't even notice it. Elfbeard was not one for doing household chores. I was working part-time and doing a college course part-time, whilst Elfbeard was working completely full-time. This meant that I did more chores, as Elfbeard was out working all day and watching anime when he got home to relax. I didn't mind doing this, as working full-time is stressful enough without doing chores on top of that. That's no excuse, dude. It's just life, bro. <laughs> Do chores. Uh. I essentially turned into his full-time maid, and was trying to juggle college and work on top of that. See? Women always get put upon. Sad. Also, Elfbeard wasn't exactly one for cleaning up after himself, so if I didn't clean it, then the flat would just be in a state. He'd spend his days off gaming all day, eating and drinking at the computer until it was covered in crumbs and stuff. Ugh. Not fun to clean. Was this his computer or your computer? Boy, come in here and destroy my computer. You could be out on the street in no time flat. I won't lie and say I cook dinner every night or anything, though, because Elfbeard would bring takeaways home a few nights a week, so I wasn't doing anything. He was quite possessive as well. He knew my phone password, would be right at my side when we were out with mutual friends, 
to the point where he would grab my hand or pull me into his lap if I wasn't paying enough attention to him. And being civil with ex-boyfriends was out of the question. I've heard since ending things with him that a couple of exes who had remained friends with me had cut contact because Elfbeard had asked them to. The definition of insecurity? Yep, he's checking all the neckbeard boxes for sure. <laughs> this part is still a sensitive topic, and I don't really want to write it out again, so I'm just going to copy and paste from another post I made. There was an instance, I think, a year or something ago, which was kind of similar to the reason that I decided to end things. I had a lot of partners before Elfbeard and I had started to date, and I will openly admit that it was because I just wanted to be needed and wanted by somebody else. It made me feel like I wasn't completely useless. Anyways, I had this past, but Elfbeard hadn't been with anyone that way before me, so I made sure that he felt comfortable telling me what he did and didn't like. One night he suggested humiliation. I was a little reluctant because I don't really like name calling, so we write a list. He ends up saying some things that weren't discussed or approved beforehand, and I cried. Stupid, I know, but what he said hurt. He brought up my past and essentially slut-shamed me in bed knowing how sensitive I am about that subject. He told me that I ruined the mood and let me cry alone for a bit. He did cuddle up and apologize after, but it was more of like a I'm sorry you're way too sensitive kind of apology, though he was a bit more poetic with it. Copy and paste part is over now. So he wasn't exactly nice all the time. Don't get me wrong, there were times where he was really sweet and I loved spending time with him. But looking back on it now, there were a lot of instances where he was just cruel or jealous for no reason at all. Anyways, fast forward to a couple of weeks before Christmas this year, the downfall of our relationship. Like I've said, I tried to make Elfbeard feel comfortable about what he wanted to try in the bedroom. Now, Elfbeard loves all things D&D, Harry Potter, Star Wars, etc. I should also mention that Elfbeard is a massive Lord of the Rings fan. I think you folks know where this is going. He started wanting to braid my hair, which I thought was cute, so I let him. He let me paint his nails, so I'd be a bit of a hypocrite if I didn't let him braid my hair. And he also started saying, I love you, but in Elvish. I just thought it was kind of adorable. I think it's a little weird. <laughs> but everybody moved on. Until he sat me down and told me that he wanted to roleplay as Legolas and Gimli in the bedroom. OP being Legolas and Elfbeard being Gimli. He'd even ordered the ears. <laughs> God. <laughs> I just kind of laughed. It wasn't malicious, just nervous giggles. And I apologized immediately and tried to explain that it was just nervous laughter. I'm just going to be real with y'all. I didn't want to do this. It made me feel awkward and uncomfortable. And the thought of me with elf ears on gave me the giggles. Nothing wrong with Elfbeard liking it, I guess, but it's just not my thing. I told him we should maybe put it on hold. It was a good idea, but I wasn't sure I wanted to try it right away. I secretly hoped that he would just forget about it. He was so caught up on my nervous laughter, though, and the fact that I humiliated him that he ignored my existence for weeks. I could not get him to speak to me. I made him dinner, and he brought a takeaway home for himself. I had to sleep on the couch in my own flat because he didn't want to be near me. His friends also started harassing me. One of them, Mike, is a full-on neckbeard. No hygiene or respect for women slash LGBTQ folks. Elfbeard is apparently the only, oh, we don't say that word, that Mike likes because he knew Elfbeard before Elfbeard had come out. Mike was harassing me daily, threatening me, telling me how awful I was for making Elfbeard feel like trash. And Elfbeard did nothing to stop him. He thought it was funny. Christmas came, and Elfbeard decided to leave and spend the holidays with his parents. I was left alone on Christmas Day and Boxing Day. I've never felt more alone. My dad is high risk, so I couldn't visit them. I managed to video chat with them for a little while, and my sister dropped by for a little while too, but other than that, I was on my own. After a certain talking to from my friend Amy, I finally decided to leave. Elfbeard had been ignoring me for way longer than what would be considered normal. He was letting his friends harass me and had no issues leaving me alone on Christmas. I told Elfbeard I was moving in with my sister until he moved out. I'm actually staying with Amy, but myself and my sister know that he'd never bring Hassel to her door as he's afraid of her husband. <laughs> he's a bitch. 
He has one more week to get his stuff together and get out. I think he's moving back in with his parents. His friends and family, and even Elfbeard himself, have been trying to guilt trip me into going back. They've been saying that me breaking up with him has destroyed his mental health. As Julius Caesar once said, a too crappy. I almost fell for it, as I know what it's like to be in a bad place, but I'm hoping his friends and family will be there to support Elfbeard. I can't risk getting back with him. I hope this fits in the sub. Sorry that it's so long. There's a TLDR below for you guys. So I think the solution is you cuddle up and apologize, but in the I'm sorry you're way too sensitive kind of way that he did to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Turn them tables. He definitely did some gaslighting, like this chick was obviously way too good for him, you know? Cleaning up and trying to take care of somebody who quite frankly doesn't want to take care of themselves. I'm not even really that against things like you know, letting your significant other know that you need attention by grabbing their hand or something. It's an insecure move, but people have the right to be insecure, you know? They can feel things, they can attempt to remedy them in a way that works for them, and hopefully get over it at some point. Even things like sharing the phone password. Me and my wife know each other's phone passwords, mostly because there's nothing to hide, you know? But I do understand that it's not for everybody. You have to have that discussion. I think there was probably a discussion because you guys do seem good at, like, talking about things. He's like, let's do a humiliation thing. And she's like, okay, these are the words that's okay. And then he probably said slut or something like that. And she's like, oh my god. But yeah, OP came around on that. So fucking Elfbeard should be able to come around on the, the elf <laughs> the elf years scenario, right? Get over it, my guy. Yes, your significant other thinks it's weird. But guess what? That's because it is fucking weird. <laughs> And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, if you're into it. But you need to understand that not everybody is going to dig on it in the same way that you do. The guy's obviously a piece of trash. I don't know how long they were actually together or even how old the characters in this story are. But I'd suspect that they're in their early 20s, you know, just trying to get it figured out. And this is a very dangerous time for Elfbeard. <laughs> he could become a decent person or he could uh, fall in with Mike onto the neckbeard side. And I think I probably see the future and what's going to happen, but I'm not going to put that on him. Anyways, I've rambled far too much. I thought this was a really interesting story. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. And now let us get into the end of the Namikun and Samayus saga written by our very favorite game master, Ramtide. Showdown. The Warlock and I. Welcome to the final chapter of what has become the trilogy of my quest to build a functional RPG group when I first arrived in a new town and explored the depraved depths of its local game shop. <laughs> Where we last parted ways, Samayus desperately tried to maintain a monopoly on the fedora-tipping atheist market, seeing it as a integral facet of his unique and charismatic personality. He even went so far as to throw blows in the local game shop parking lot, feeling betrayed after Father Alain and Grumadin had purchased some spiffy headwear for themselves. If you're not up to speed, then I humbly suggest you ought to watch some Red X for his riveting narration of our story thus far. Ooh, I just love the plug. Thank you so much, Ramtide. <laughs> Links and everything. Wow. You can find our previous episodes in sequential order at the following two links. Part 1 and Part 2. What will become of this renegade warlock? Will he repent for his sins and amend his ways? Or will he rain hellfire and damnation down upon the heads of his enemies? Stick around and find out, friends, in the thrilling conclusion of this Tale from the Tabletop! Lovingly subtitled, Samayus the Salty. The dynamic duo notified me by text that week that they were prepared to forgive Samayus. They explained that they just wanted to come together and play RPGs, the guy spurged out a bit, sure, but they didn't want to hold a grudge and were willing to let bygones be bygones. I said, however, that I wanted nothing to do with Samayus at that point. Still, they asked me if I would reach out to Samayus and see if he would offer a sincere apology. They said that if he did, then I ought to let him rejoin the game before we convened again. Boys will be boys, and it's not like anyone actually got hurt. If he would accept those terms, it could all be water under the bridge. That's true, boys do fight sometimes, and then they're like, yeah, we're still bros. I gave it a couple of days. I wasn't in the mood to play diplomat, 
and the thought of Samayus made me sicker than a spoiled tendy basket. <laughs> he had authored my misery twice now, the first entrance being my introduction to his beast friend Namikun, and twice by way of his spurging out over fashion accessories and getting my game cancelled. I never did reach out to him. About midway through the week, he gave me a call. I let it ring for a little bit before I picked it up. OP? Yeah. Samayus? Hey, bad. OP? What? Samayus? About last weekend, I... I, uh... OP? Spit it out. Samayus? You need to kick Grumadin and Alain out of the group. I hung up, put my phone on silent, and laughed like a bedlamite for the next few minutes while my phone rang off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right move. He had to be joking, right? The air raid sirens were sounding in the distance, and the world was turning red. I had my moment, and eventually I came back. Samayus had given up on trying to call at this point, and had taken to sending me an endless deluge of text messages, all of which I steadfastly ignored. I made up my mind. He was out of the group. After starting a fight with one of my players, he expressed no remorse and demanded that I throw them out instead of him? <laughs> you are so done, dude. I started a group chat with the four remaining players and sent out the message. Samayus would not be a part of our next session. We would continue without him. Alain asked what happened and if I had reached out to our wayward weeaboo, and I said no. I was putting my foot down. I asked everyone if maybe they wanted to reschedule for a different day or perhaps someone else could host, hoping that we could just avoid encountering our party's former warlock entirely. Grumadin had a busy schedule, however, and the schedule we had already formed was the only one that would work for him, and nobody was really in a spot to accommodate our group. I didn't want to punish Grumadin by excluding him, so we held on to the prearranged time and place to run our campaign. The week flew by. And the time at long last came to reconvene. I arrived rather early at the local game shop that day, chuckled to myself at the freshly printed NO HATS sign on the way in, headed to my favorite table, and grabbed a seat. I laid out my binders and dice, grabbed a sandwich out of the lunch I had brought on the way, and I started to play on my phone while I waited for the others. I felt a sinister presence approaching the table, and I looked up. Samayus was walking slowly towards me. Had he been waiting for me? Today he was dressed differently. The neon anime shirts and fashionably tattered blue jeans that usually graced his frame were gone. He wore a leather jacket, and beneath it, all black. Accented, of course, with specks of dandruff and oily smears. <laughs> a couple of those punk rocker-style spike bracelets adorned his lard-infused wrists, his hands were white, tightly gripping the lucky fedora that he could no longer wear inside the shop, while his greasy hair flowed dramatically in the breeze of central AC. <laughs> the soft, padded step of sneakers had been replaced by the hard clunk of black leather platform boots against the tile floor as he advanced. What stood out to me the most, however, were his eyes. For this very special occasion, Samayu spared no expense. <laughs> Beneath his guy liner, he was wearing bright green cat pupil contacts. When we locked eyes, he grinned at me. Vampire fangs. I, <laughs> I did everything in my power to resist fleeing or placing my palm to my forehead, while a tumbleweed rolled across the local game shop floor, heralding our final standoff. Today, Sam Ayus meant business, and I had truly met my match. He approached, watching me like a predator would watch its quarry as it moved in for the kill, and without saying a word, grabbed the back of a chair and pulled it out. His movements were controlled and deliberate as he took that seat. We stared each other down, not a word passing between us. The tension was thicker than even Samayus himself, and I could feel him trying to explode my head by raw force of will. <laughs> I'll never know how I survived his psychic bombardment. <laughs> You're so lucky, OP. <laughs> Finally, I broke the silence. OP, what do you want, Samayus? Samayus? I do not know the Samayus you speak of. There's no one here by that name. He must still be getting used to this outfit. 
Samai struggled to form words with the vampiric mandibles that filled his mouth, speaking in a lisping growl. Spit dribbled into his goatee and flew from his mouth with every sentence. <laughs> he paused to wipe his chin, and I repeated my question, sharpening my tone. OP, what do you want, Samayus? Samayus, do you want to know why I play a warlock? OP, is it because you're an edgelord? <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Samayus, I never told you this when I first met you because... I knew you wouldn't believe me. I know most people don't when I tell them at first, but they come to realize that it's true. I play a warlock because I am a warlock. Oh boy. <laughs> I made a pact with a demon years ago in exchange for my soul. I know you can sense it. Every mortal can. OP. Meds. Take them now. Samayus bared his fangs and hissed at me. <laughs> I could see the saliva bubbling around his plastic teeth and streaking down his chin, and a few droplets even flew from his mouth and landed on the table. I grabbed a napkin out of my lunch and wiped up the dribble while I contemplated the cruel fate that I had met. It was all over now. He was going to spit at me until I died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, horrible death indeed, Samayus. It wasn't easy. The transformation was painful, <laughs> but what he gave me was worth it. Do you know what that demon gave me in exchange for my soul? Autism? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got me good. Ha! Got him! Samayus. He gave me power, OP. Real power. Power to crush those who dishonor and disobey me. I thought we were friends, but everyone here betrayed me. You betrayed me, and you will pay the price. And then, when I'm done with you, I'll have my revenge on the rest. OP, you punched Elaine because he bought a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Samayus, rationalize it however you want, but it's too late for all of you now. You've provoked my wrath, and you will regret it. OP, I'm regretting a lot more than just your wrath, Samayus. He then produced a pocket journal and a pen out of his jacket. The infernal wizard had revealed his tome of unholy incantations, <laughs> and he stood at the ready, ready to read my doom from its pages. <laughs> I had to act fast, lest my fate be sealed and I succumb to its wicked spell. Instinct compelled me, and my arm shot out from across the table and snatched the book from the mage's claws. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. OP, what's this? Samayu shrieked like a banshee and tried to grab it back, but I held him at length with one hand while I opened it with the other, the shop owner yelled at us to knock it off or he'd kick us out, and Samayu sunk into his chair, glaring in anger at the shop owner who had now returned to his business. Were you going to shoot a fireball at the owner too, Samayu? <laughs> it didn't take long, however, for him to return his attentions to me. Samayu, give it back! OP, or what? He bared his teeth and hissed <laughs> once more, <laughs> matting his beard with drool. His breathing grew jagged and uneven. I could smell his unbrushed teeth from across the table as he hyperventilated through his dollar store costume. <laughs> OP, you're already on thin ice here, dude, and I know you don't want to be kicked out for good. No, you can't have this back. I think I'm going to keep this book for a while and read your fan fiction. <laughs> Stripped of his source of power, his eyes grew wet. <laughs> he tried to blink away the forming tears. The demon that had enslaved this poor soul seemed to be losing its hold. <laughs> Between the moisture in his eyes and the motion of his blinking, his contact lens shifted out of place, and he shuffled off to the bathroom to realign his demonic possession in quiet shame. <laughs> I took the time to leisurely thumb through his notebook. 
between crude pentagrams, gibberish posing as incantations, and shadowy figures drawn in black ballpoint pen, it was fraught with whining journal entries chronicling his arguments with his parents, petty vendettas against his friends, and women's rejections. It was a mighty sorcerer's tome indeed. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Eventually, he returned to the table where I sat, his contact lens restored, but his confidence and guy liner forever shattered. <laughs> Sam, I use. Give it back, or I'll lay a curse on you. He lifted his hands and wiggled his fingertips at me. <laughs> Is this real life, though? Oh, I was shaken in my combat boots from this threatening gesture. He was desperate to recover this book. Who knows what extent he would go to to retrieve it. This tome might be the source of his powers. And with it, I held all the cards. It was better to not give it up and to see this fight through to the end. OP, do you know why I like being the Game Master, Samayus? Because I'm God. God makes the rules. Now I've got your fucking diary. And I'll gladly read this out loud to the whole game shop. And don't you think for a moment that I won't. So listen closely because I'm going to lay down the rules and I'm only going to do this once. I spelled out my terms for his unconditional surrender. I was going to keep his diary. Permanently. If he ever approached anyone at this local game shop in a way that I didn't like, interrupted my game, or even so much as approached me again, I was going to spill all his satanic knowledge to the rest of the nerds in full, lurid detail. Every last bit. From his alleged demonic possession, to him thinking his mom was a bitch for telling him to get a job. <laughs> all the way back to when Stacy rejected him, despite him holding the door and tipping his hat. I slipped the book into my backpack, and I tucked my pack between my legs. With my turn set, I told him to get the hell out of my player's seat. He was dumbstruck. At length, he stood up and pushed in the chair as he bitterly lisped, You regret this, Dungeon Master. And he moved to the far end of the shop. <laughs> he picked a comic off of one of the shelves and sat down at an empty table to quietly read it by himself. One by one, my players filed in and took their seats at the table, paying no mind to the dejected form of Samayus lurking in the fringes of the shop. We began our game from where we left off. Every so often, when somebody would laugh or cheer, I would catch Samayus looking forlornly at the table where he was once welcome. Samayus eventually did apologize to everyone for his behavior over the course of a couple months, albeit one at a time, but I still didn't let him back into the group. Our party went on to campaign for many months with minimal issues, and we all became fast friends. Under the threat of social shame, Samayus kept his behavior in line. We never spoke much after that, content to exchange nods of acknowledgement to one another from afar. I approached him one day, his book in hand, and asked him if we were cool. He replied that we were, and I returned it to its rightful owner. The no hat sign, however, never came down. <laughs> and that concludes this noteworthy portion of this particular tabletop group in which I participated. This is not the end, however. Take heart, my friends, for we have only scratched the surface of the naked neck beardery to which I have been privileged in my extensive career as a game master. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this particular trilogy, and I look forward to bringing you yet another sordid tale from the tabletop. Until next we meet, friends. Goodbye, Ramtide. Goodbye. I miss you. Goodbye. God. <laughs> the way that Samaeus was described as like a, a mage the entire time. His little spell book. Oh, God. It couldn't have been any better. Honestly, I think that was quite a fitting end. I'm sort of sad that he didn't get let back into the group because surely that would have led to even more stories. An absolute epic of sorts. <laughs> but a trilogy will definitely suffice. I'll cut these together at some point and it can get its own full length video, which I think will be over an hour. So you can look forward to that. The, the dry responses from Ramtide are just <laughs> the best. <laughs> it's like dudes all, I'm going to have my revenge. And Opie's like, I mean, you punched him for wearing a hat, bro. <laughs> You're the one that's being insane here. I don't know if he actually wiggled his fingers and stuff like that. 
But I hope that he did. I hope to God that he did. This sort of beardery is just <laughs> so unprecedented. Wow. I also think that you did a good thing by eventually giving him the book back. I mean, what are you going to keep it for anyways? You probably read the entire thing. Photocopy all the pages. Oh, that's the move to make. Then you still have a copy of his spell book, should he decide that he changed his mind. <laughs> ah, big brain time. I'm definitely enjoying these stories. I'm going to go dig through RPG horror stories, I think. Uh, that'll be the next, the next episode for tomorrow, and we'll see how it goes. Nice guys seem to have performed halfway decently. More decently than I thought, at least. So we'll see if we can continue mixing up the content. You know, beard story, random subreddit, beard story, random subreddit, back and forth until we uh, eventually go insane. <laughs> uh, but may none of us go as insane as Samayus. And in order to ward off that incantation, I'm going to need you to do all of the following, okay? Follow this list closely, all right? Like the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. And also, maybe even share it if you really want to make sure that the incantation is strong. <laughs> We've also got a link swarm down in the description. I hope you check that out. You can support monetarily through PayPal or Patreon. And you can support me socially through Twitter or Discord or Facebook or on my other channel. Because it's always nice to have that cross-platform pollination. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and of course, I would be remiss if I did not thank my beautiful, gorgeous, generous patrons... Lady Nix, Crimson Albedo, Dot Nathan, Robert Waits, Just Austin, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, and Tato Ferret. Thank you guys so much for helping me to live the dream, assisting me on my journey towards ascension. <laughs> but I'll totally be a paladin, not a warlock. Don't worry about that. <laughs> if anybody else wants to support monetarily, I mean, that is always massively appreciated. But if you can't right now, don't worry about it, bros. I just appreciate you hanging out with me today, and I definitely hope that you'll come back and join us again tomorrow. In order to do so, you will need to take care of yourself physically. Do not forget to wash your hands. Keep yourself clean. Have you been putting off that shower? Go take it right now. <laughs> and also mentally, definitely take some time out and do something that you enjoy today. Something that makes your heart sing. Because you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye-bye.